that we'll be able to enjoy the holidays and enjoy just life after this. That was some of the reaction um, as people watched and heard the president's address, and it's been mixed reaction. But let me give you where the national pulse is on this. 71% of American voters say the undocumented immigrants should be able to say, while well, 25% so they should not. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated about how we get there. A Wall Street Journal NBC news poll showed that 48% of Americans oppose the president's move to take executive action, while 36% support the executive action, and 14% were on the fence. All right, let me give you a quick snapshot as to some of the reaction to what the president had to say, because it ran the gamut. Uh, you heard from some people who support it, say it's a good idea, but... Republicans, maybe some presidential hopefuls, others that are in leadership positions, they've called him everything from somebody who wants to be a monarch and an emperor, imperial action, um, and have threatened some action. It's just a quick sample immediately after the president's address, what we heard. It's incumbent on Republicans in Congress to use every single constitutional tool we have to defend the rule of law, to reign in a president so that the president does not become an unaccountable monarch. The president has taken actions that he himself has said are those of a king or an emperor, not an American president. Everyone wants something to be done, but this method feels like kingship. All right, let us bring in our panel right now. I know there's no shortage of opinions on this subject. Chris Chase, former Connecticut congressman, distinguished fellow in public service at the University of New Haven, who has decided to grace us with his presence here today. Michael Tobin, independent political consultant. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. And Mr. Congressman, I went back in the archives because in 2006, uh, then President Bush, um, pushed for a very similar plan, not through the same methodology, but pushed for a very similar plan. Um, and you weren't crazy about it back then, and I suspect you're not crazy about what the president, uh, uh, both the concept, let alone the method, last night. What I would like to do is give them a blue card, let them stay here, let them travel, but don't give them a path to citizenship. What people don't understand is we probably don't have 10 million, we probably have more like 14 to 20 million. As soon as they become citizens, they can bring in their brothers, their sisters, their aunts and uncles. So you're not impacting the country with 20 million, you're impacting the country potentially with 60 million. When we legalized 3 million in 86, we ultimately ended up with 9 million citizens. Um, Michael, uh, we'll get to the methodology, mm -hmm. but the premise of it, um, I do remember it wasn't that many years ago, as we mentioned, uh, then President Bush, he mentioned 86, then President Reagan, modified not to the scope of what we saw before, but this idea was popular enough that it got 68 votes in the U.S. Senate long, long ago and couldn't even get a vote in the House, but most people at the time believed that if it did, it would have passed on an up and down vote. From a policy standpoint, there seems to be support for this on a broader level. There is, and it is bipartisan support. Um, within each party, there are factions that would disagree, uh, but it has bipartisan support among the electorate. It has uh, support from unaffiliated independent voters. And it, everything from an amnesty at one extreme to a very tepid uh, administrative fix, uh, which is sort of what we were hearing from the president last night, despite all the fear it is, it is an administrative fix, is always under consideration. Anybody running for U.S. Senate, anybody running for president, they always test this issue. How is it flying? Where is the populace on this? What's people's mm. thinking? So from a policy perspective, everybody mm. in this country is and, from someplace else. And you made the point about, about, that. about Eric Cantor. What was that point? Yes, we were talking in the green room. I'm not even sure what color it is. Um, <laughs> uh, this was going to happen years ago, and, and politic not years ago, recently, excuse me, uh, uh, but as Politico reported today, it was ready to go with Republican and Democratic support, and it was going to happen the in the Senate, uh, in the House it was going to pass, and then Eric Cantor <laughs> lost his Republican primary because he was mealy-mouthed on this, and then it was just... We're not going to touch mm. it. But the issue's always there. You know, Dominic, we talked before last night at 6 o'clock before the president's mm -hmm. address. And you, we hadn't obviously heard it. Um, and we had an idea what was going to be said, but we didn't get an advanced copy of it at that point either. Now that you heard it, you were a little conflicted if you thought he was going too far with it. You saw the words, um, and you've seen the reaction a day later. Do you think it's something the White House is still glad they did? I think at this point, this White House is, is glad with his actions. But 
what we saw last night is President Obama at his best. He is at his best, no offense, giving a speech. I still worry about how this is going to play out. The congressman brought up a good point. Is this going to encourage more illegal immigrants? Now, I know that you have to be here for five years to be eligible for th what the president announced last year. But someone on the outside may say, I'm going to take my chance and get there anyway. So that's one issue. And two, I just don't see how the Republicans, Richard, are going to sit still and take this. You said They're going to fight back. You said it best. He, the president is at his best when he's giving a speech. And as some, as some columnist once said, he's excellent at rushing to the high ground and then doing nothing from that vantage. And he's done the least with the most amount of political capital. Where was this guy, the guy we saw last night? Where was he two years ago on issues? Where was he... Six months ago, where was he two months ago during the campaigns? I don't, I don't know who that guy was last night. It, but does, he was, it does strike me, Congressman, that the Republicans are in a really tricky spot right now. They are. They've got the House, they've got the Senate. They can't just complain about leadership from the other party. But And while they've tempered down the talk today, at least, because I've watched closely yeah. as to who would use the I word, I was, the impeachment. I, I was down there uh, the last few days, and they were determined to try to, you know, take it in stride a bit. Um, the president has the legal right to do this, I think, but he has taken a legal right and magnified it to an extreme, affecting five million people. And, and I fear that future presidents are going to just say there's no limit to executive power. Uh, Republicans, believe it or not, really were looking forward to having some meaningful dialogue. They thought they have a list of a number of things they think they can work with President Obama, even immigration to some measure. And for him to do this now, and people told him, Mr. President, we just got to like to back off. You know, there's some things we can do together. The flip side, though, is for six years they've been talking about doing this. The former president um, put his neck out. I, I give George Bush credit. Whether you agree or disagree with his policy, I happen to. I know a lot of people didn't. He put his neck out. He tried to do this, and then it went nowhere. This president got 68 votes in the Senate. They wouldn't even vote on it in the House. They wouldn't even let it come to the floor. And they've asked time and time again. There's been promises. I know he pushed back on the issue because he thought that they were close to a deal. You mentioned before with Cantor. Whatever the rationale is while it fell apart, it didn't happen. At a certain point, maybe you can argue overreach. He said, enough already. You guys want to do something about it? Pass a piece of legislation. Yeah. The ball is in Congress's court. They can pass a you bill. You know how hard it is to go to a community meeting and explain to people how someone who's here illegally can be here legally? And... Um, and they say rule of law, and so it's a really difficult issue when you're that, talking that, with your constituents. There are very few. The Senate is different, of course, as we just saw, but it's very different in the House. I defer to the congressman, of course, but we're talking about primary challenges. And if you could get through that, as the Republicans just showed, that they could in, instill discipline in their party, picking the right candidates and not letting the Tea Party run the conversation. If you could get through a primary, you could get through the general on this issue. So do it now. And yeah. then you have two they years. They want this done and say, before you get to 16, right? Get this out of the exactly. way now. You don't want to turn off the Latino vote. But that's the politi politics. Mm -hmm. From the policy standpoint, I, 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 did, I was struck by one thing the president said. Let's just live in the real world. We're not going to round everybody up. We're not going to take well, them over the borders in buses. So why don't we at least acknowledge, you're going to meet somebody next segment who's one of those but 4 yeah. million people and just say, okay, you know what? I'm not making you a citizen. You're not going to cut the line. Wait, wait, you got to keep your I, nose I, I clean. You got to pay taxes. You got to do all the rest. That. In five years, they'll be citizens. And when they're a citizen, they have the right to bring in their brothers, their sisters, their cousins, their parents. They have the legal right as citizens. When someone gives birth, we're the only country I'm aware of where if you give birth to someone illegally, they're an American citizen. In a lot of countries, if you, if you give birth in the country and you're here with a visa, your kid isn't an American citizen just because they were born here. And other countries are suffering zero or negative population That's growth, true. and they are, their economies are stagnating, and they're not going to have young workers around, native-born or but immigrants, so to support a, a so growing senior population. So, so but we don't want those problems. No, but so the solution is allow kids who come here, who have degrees, to stay here. Bring in people with expertise. Remember, we limited the number of people who could come from Europe because we said we weren't getting enough from so-called third world countries. You had a slip before. You said people who were born illegally. Nobody's born illegally. People are born all the time, but they're here <laughs> under questionable no, circumstances. No, no. I know what you mean, but it's a no, telling I, I, slip. People no, aren't born illegally. People no. have babies all the time, and they ha just happen to be having them here. No, no, no. it's just not happening. Yeah. Literally, parents come to give birth to someone 
who was there illegal, their child is legal under our law, mm -hmm. and in 18 years, that parent becomes an American citizen. You know, I saw a couple numbers that really surprised me. Um, one was, we know the population trends in this country, okay? We know that uh, the country's getting uh, more uh, brown, it's getting uh, more, uh, whatever the nationalities are that, that are populating more. We know how Latinos the demographic, absolutely. Tremendously. That said, what do you think the voting population is um, of Latinos in this country? I saw this today, I was surprised. Smaller than I thought, 11%. Whites make up 75% of the electorate right now. So while we can say, and the Democratic Party can say, listen, we're certainly appealing to uh, a growing population base yeah, in this country what, what in terms of election turnout, right? It still is overwhelmingly white in this country. And how will this issue as immigration play out in two years' time? Uh, that, to me, will be fascinating. In Texas and Arizona and Florida and so on, the, the population is a lot larger. And yeah. they will determine the outcome of races. But the voting electorate is maybe different than the, the actual population. Yeah. The, the one point that I think Republicans have a legitimate beef on is 22 times the president said he didn't have the power to do what he did last night. Um, you want to call it double talk. You want to mm -hmm. call it hypocrisy. Whatever you want to call it. There wasn't that credible of, a, of an explanation as to why he said what he said, and now all of a sudden it's okay. I agree with the congressman. Legally, I haven't found one scholar who says he didn't have the authority to do what he did last night, but he told everybody from Univision on down, I can't do it. This is not a new problem, right? Government legislating is about problem solving. This is not a new problem. They just decided to act on it now, and we're supposed to act as if they discovered it yesterday. It's like these New York Times stories <laughs> about poor children in foster homes and in shelters as if, like, wow, the Times just discovered poor people yesterday, and we're going to write about it. It's, so in that way, it's maddening. Why not handle this two years ago, four years ago, Bush administration, do, do Democrats? Do we have a second more on sure. this issue? To me, it's not about the issue of whether we support immigration or not, because we should, we must, we know what's happening in Japan. They're going to lose a third of their population. It's a vibrant part. The issue is, should we be, uh, have the ability to decide who comes into the country and under what means? We're not going to send people home. That's why I, I would give them a blue card, not a green card, a path to citizenship. Allow them to stay. That comes, you know, you take that off the table. But what's dishonest, I think, about what the president's saying is the parents that we're allowing to stay were not making American citizens. What he doesn't say is when that child is 18 years old, that parent has the legal right to become an American citizen. And in some states, those 18-year-old children mm. qualify for in-state tuition for SUNY, for, for public colleges. Right. And then they're engineers and they're doctors well, and they're nurses. And, and, and I think the brain drain, the right. idea that we educate these kids and then don't let them stay in this country when it's such an asset to us is just insane. Yeah, but but, but you, just you, one you, final you, point, you, if you, I can you're ask you. my point, though. I'm no, saying, no, I get your point. I, I hear your he's point. He's not telling the truth when he says the parents aren't going to become Finally, American citizens. Do you think two years from now, the executive order will still be the only change or will Congress take the opportunity, which they have before them, if they don't like what the president did or Congress said, and try and put something. legislation? I think you Congress do. will try Congress to do will something. Do something. Yeah. Okay. You agree. If for no other reason than to queue up their presidential candidates. Hmm. When we come back, we want to put a, a real face when we talk about immigration reform. You're going to meet for yourself here an undocumented worker who has lived in the U.S. for 14 years, and she's got children who were born in this country. This is exactly the kind of person or family we're talking about. You'll meet her on RFL right after this. And there will be a lot of workers, a lot of day laborers and community members who also deserve to be here to stay in the country because we contribute to the economy of this country too.